This is the ultimate runner's tier list. I've wanted to do one of these for absolutely ages. Everything that you could possibly think of that is to do with running, things that we use, things that we wear, stuff that happens to us, anything and everything, pretty much, that you suggested. I asked for your suggestions over on Instagram, so if you missed that, too bad. Make sure you're following me on Instagram next time. I'm gonna be putting all of these running things into my own specially made tiers based on my opinions alone so no hate in the comments section but do feel free to voice your own opinions we can start a debate uh, but ultimately my opinion is final because this is my tier list so if you don't like it make your own first up I mean, what a start. We are starting with Strava. Probably the most popular running application that is used. And I mean, these days you don't even really need Strava. People used to measure their runs on Strava. These days it's more of like a gloating, boasting, social media platform to prove that you've run, keep up your Strava streak or track your volume or fight against your Strava friends on segments. But I've got a lot of time for Strava. I'm not a religious Strava user. I make a selection of my runs public, uh, but I'm going to put it in the would recommend category. Strava's good. Good egg. I think it's responsible for a lot of motivation out there. The next few items on this list actually are all related to Strava, which maybe that even means I should just bump Strava itself up from would recommend to PB material. Look, I've done it. Yes! Yes! Next up we've got Strava. Now, this is a Twitter page. I don't even think it's even active anymore because I had a little look the other day and they haven't tweeted since October the 3rd, 2022. So if you're watching this and you are the creator, well, one of the moderators for Strava on Twitter, please, please bring it back because it was so funny. Couple of examples from their page. I mean, the, the most recent tweet is, he's a 10 but tells you his Strava time over his chip time. We've got people on here running 5K PBs on downhill routes. They've put a screenshot of a guy who has recorded an activity called setting up camp. People that are basically using Strava in all the wrong ways, but it's absolutely hilarious. So Strava might not exist anymore, but it's it's going on the PB material. It's neck and neck with Strava itself. Okay, Strava art. I've got a lot of time for the people that put time and effort into making some beautiful roots on Strava. Pops up a lot at Christmas. People will make their homemade Christmas trees. It is cheating if you do it on a football pitch because that's a lot easier. This one here is unreal. So this is going in would recommend maybe appreciating Strava art. It is harder than it looks. I've tried and failed. And for that reason, it's going in the would recommend category. This is one of my favorite suggestions that came in from a few of you on Instagram, which was a worded a couple of different ways. One person said, when you do a run with Kate and you make sure that you have to state that in your Strava description so that everyone knows that's why you ran a little bit slower that day. So. I suppose this one could be classed as justifying your slower pace because of the company that you ran with. So I've got a little example here from some random guy on Strava and that's gonna be going in uh, giving me the ick. I'm not a big fan of this one. I don't think you should be beating your friends down for being a little bit slower than you or uphold some sort of pace ego that you have because literally it's going and give me the ick. Okay, we've got two more Strava related things before I move on to the rest of the running world. Segments. This is a really difficult one because I feel like this is a big part of the reason why a lot of people like Strava. People will go out on segment hunts on their runs, on their sessions, maybe even putting a burst in up a hill because they know there's a segment there. And I don't know if I rate that to be honest. Uh, I'm gonna put it on meh. You know, like if that motivates you, great. If not, or equally, I don't think it's a necessity in our lives because Strava could delete this feature tomorrow and the world would keep spinning, even though you might shed a few tears. And lastly, on the Strava front, we've got Kira D'Amato. This woman's Strava, you need to be following it. It's gonna bring you up every day. She captions every single run that she shares on Strava with an original joke. A lot of time for Kira D'Amato's captions on her runs, it's it's going in love the grind. First item in that very top tier. A round of applause please for Kira D'Amato everyone. <laughs> Moving on. So we've covered the best running app. 
We're now moving on to the best running website. In my humble opinion, now if you're from outside of the UK, you might never heard of the Power of 10 before, but my God, you need to hear about it. The Power of 10 mission has inspired and motivated and improved standards of performance since its inception in 2006. The Power of 10 is instilling a real sense of purpose and value that has witnessed greater depth and higher standards in the vast majority of events across all age groups. This is a ranking website. This is basically the king of all tier lists that ranks every track and field performance that is done on UK soil on its database. You can really geek out on here. Better than the US equivalent of Tifa's. Power of 10 absolutely sneezes on Tifa's. It's going in PB material. Ooh, this is a good one. A lot of people sent this one in. It's the debate between using miles or Ks. Might be seen as the US versus the rest of the world. You'd be wrong. Basically, all of the people I run with use miles, myself included. A lot of the people I coach use Ks. And that's all right. That's kind of how I feel about it. Like the debate, I'm over it. If you want to run in Ks, I'm so happy for you. I also accept that a lot of the people that perhaps measure their weekly mileage in Ks maybe just want to sound like they're running more. Like, you know, 100K a week sounds really impressive, but only 62 miles. Anyway, I'm over the debate. I'm putting it in the bin, settling it here and now. Miles versus Ks, nobody cares. Next up, we've got running in Ks. That can go in the bin. Running in miles. Yeah, love the grind. Oh, I might upset people with the next couple. Good point in time to say make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, and uh, you know, it's okay if we have different opinions. There's no need to unsubscribe if we don't agree. Hit, if you disagree with anything that I say in this video, let's talk about it. Leave a comment, tell me why, fight your case, I'm willing to listen and you might even change my mind, okay? With that said, the next one is Park Run. No, God, please, no, no! I'm led to believe a lot of people watching these videos are a big fan of Park Run. Good news, so am I. Thank you! I may only have ran a few Park Runs in my life, probably a third of them in a pumpkin costume, but I got a lot of time for Park Run. Park Run is going right up there in PB material. Next up, we've got UTMB. What, what's UTMB? It's like trail running. Oh, it's that really expensive one. They charge the runners loads of money to fly to races to go and run in trail shoes, like partly on tarmac and then up hills and stuff. Absolutely not. Get in the bin, moving on. People are gonna hate this. A household favorite, the super shoe. Not new on the block anymore. These have been around for a few years now, but I think I speak for everyone who's raced on the road scene when I say these things are here to stay. They might be arguing about the stack height and the carbon that we're using in them, but I don't think you can take these out of the game as easy as they were put in. So for that reason, super shoes, carbon shoes, enhancing the performance of runners all around the world. These are going in would recommend. However, everyone wearing the exact same super shoe, even to the same colorway and like season of release, it's a bit boring. And there's also more shoe choice out there than just the Nike Vaporfly Alphafly Next Percent pink fly carbon Kipchoge edition. Like it's just not enough variety for me. When you see this picture in a race, yawn, give me the ick. <laughs> Wow, what can I say about Vibram Five Fingers? If you've not heard of these, I'm sorry to have to bring them to your attention because you might feel slightly repulsed just by seeing them on the screen. They're essentially a sock with toe compartments and a sole on the bottom for people who want to run barefoot but also don't want to get an infection from stepping on a twig or a rock. 99% of the people that use these are between the age of 46 and 48, and about a third of them are called Ian. <laughs> Vibrams, oh, do I put them in giving me the ick or do I just put them in the bin? I mean, admittedly, I haven't looked into like 
the selling points for these shoes, but they're just so ugly. Uh, they're going in the bin. I'm not even sorry. Staying in the racing context then, we've got virtual races. Now I know that these were sort of a necessity two, three years ago, but these should be banned in my opinion now because a virtual race is just going for a run and registering for them to send you a medal in the post. It's, it's fine if you were training for a marathon in 2020 and you still needed to get it done and it was the thing that got you through lockdown, absolutely yes, but it's 2023, you can do real races now, virtual races, in the bin, goodbye. This is the only running person that is on this list, and rightly so, Elliot Kipchoge. I don't even need to say anything else. Love the grind material, what a guy, no human is limited. Elliot Kipchoge, the goat of running. I eat chocolate, so I'm missing now, eh? And the last one in the category of racing is the Portaloo, otherwise known in the US as the Porta Party. Mixed emotions about the old humble portaloo. Look, I get it. I think these are a necessity because otherwise reality is you'd have hundreds of runners in the middle of the road at the start of a race and it's probably not great for the environment, for everyone's senses. Disgusting! But at the same time, I go to a race and I see these portaloos stacked up in a line with a massive queue behind them. You know there's not gonna be any toilet paper and you know you're gonna go in there and smell a cocktail of the last six people to use that loo's breakfast entering the pit that is then heated up beneath the seat that you've got to sit on. It's the uh, it's not it's not a pleasant experience, but I get that we need them because the alternative is uh, something much worse. So I'm going to put it in the meh category. It's just a fact of life. Now the next few on here, I guess, sit on a scale from things you absolutely need and are the best things, physical things, products, I guess, to have on your person or to use as a runner, all the way down to fads, I guess. And I mean, I've said it already, my opinion is final. So let's put them in their place. Vaseline, very necessary for multiple reasons. Stops your lips from drying into a sheet of cardboard in the winter on a cold run. And I've heard that guys like using this on their nipples you do you, uh, would recommend. Vaseline's here to stay. Sunglasses, <laughs> I'm not even gonna debate this. Love the grind. The GPS watch. Now, there's a few people out there that have got a little bit of hate for the GPS watch and they wanna bring back the days of the Casio or duct taping a stopwatch to your wrist, but I think they add a lot to our lives and let's face it, majority of us would not leave the house for a run without them because I thought, then you can't put it on Strava, can you? So. PB material. Now I think these are an essential product. Hydro tabs, definitely going in the PB material. Actually no, these ones are going in the love the grind section because these pineapple hydro tabs by OTE are delicious, would drink them 24 seven if it wasn't probably bad for me to drink them that much. There's code down there if you wanna get 20% off as well. Foam roller. Mm, do I feel meh about the foam roller? I'm feeling either very meh about it, or I'm just putting it in the bin. Like there's there's not much emotion there. In fact, it's going in the bin because I could not tell you the last time I used my foam roller. <laughs> CBD oil. Hmm. 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 It just doesn't look right. Nope. <sighs> Caffeine tablets. <sighs> Gonna put my trauma to one side here. I've not had a good experience with caffeine tablets. Namely, I've had two very bad experiences, but I understand that they work for some people. So I'm gonna be Swedish about this. Is it the, is it the Swedes that like are on the fence all the time or is it the Swiss? Swiss? Okay, I'm gonna be Swiss about this and put them in the meh category. You can take it or leave it. What I think would be better though is coffee. Now I'm not a massive coffee drinker, I'm more of a tea gal. But recently, I've enjoyed the old flat white and I get the association with the running culture. Going for a coffee after a run, throwing in the excuse of going for full on brunch. It's a gateway drug. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in, would recommend. Right, we're gonna add some pace into the mix. We're gonna rattle these ones off. Anti-chafe. Absolutely bloody essential. Putting it in PB material, it's not in love the grind because no one loves the fact that chafe is a thing. 
but it is, and anti-chafe is your way out, so it's going in PB material. However, anti-chafe for her, in a pink wind-up deodorant style container, rather than a blue one, and last time I checked we all chafed the same way, so I'm just gonna put this one in the bin. Now I could either rank this one as kinesiology tape or KT tape as a separate thing, or I could rank it as the person at the race who is held together by KT tape and shouldn't be there but is clinging on to the race that they really want to run. I think I'm gonna go for the latter because that's giving me the ick. Just take a rest day. KT tape is not going to fix your problem. And if you're standing on the start line with an extra half a kilo because of the amount of KT tape you're wearing, uh, just no, don't do that. And I got quite a few people sending in variations of this one, and it seems we're divided. There's there's two camps: people that love running with their phones, and people that want to put it in the bin. To start off with, running with your phone in your hand. That's not comfortable. You're risking dropping it or someone snatching it out of your hand. And unless you can do it in the style that Ed Goddard does where he's clearly racing with his phone in his hand here, probably playing some Thin Lizzy, just no, it's giving me the ick. The phone holder armband. Ah, uh, I feel a bit bad because a lot of people use these, but I just imagine that the rest of the time, unless you clean your phone with alcohol wipes, it's just gonna give off BO aroma when you uh, go to answer your phone and then are reminded that it was on your arm for an hour yesterday. I'm sorry, it's going in the bin. Probably the best solution to if you do want to run with your phone, the phone in the running belt. Still looks horrendous. I'll put it in the meh category though because I can appreciate that listening to a podcast on a run is a good thing sometimes and the belt is probably, I mean you can hide it under your t-shirt, we'll allow the belt. Taking so many supplements that you rattle when you run up the stairs to go and clean your teeth after breakfast, I just think it's unnecessary. There's so many things out there you can get these days but you don't need llama mane or a mushroom soup capsule to uh... <laughs> To run fast. Equally though, I'd say I'd recommend a multivit, maybe some vit D in the winter, vitamin C to boost your immune system, probiotics are really good, maybe an iron supplement if you've experienced a bit of anemia in the past. I mean that is quite a lot actually, that's enough to make you rattle. Supplements, I'll put it in the would recommend category if we're saying supplements full stop. Not supplements exhaustive, just Take it easy. Porridge. To put a little translation in there for our American viewers. That's oatmeal. I mean, you know I don't need to talk on this. We would be probably 10% slower if oats weren't in our lives. I don't even need to look at the research because I just know that to be true. Porridge is absolutely love the grind. If you're not eating porridge, you're holding yourself back from your true potential. Now, I'm not ranking Wim Hof because there's not enough tiers he'd be off the charts of whatever the next one above Love the Grind would be because he's basically Jesus. I am ranking ice baths. Now, this one's really difficult because I know they're good for you and they can make you feel really good, but they're just so uncomfortable. <sighs> I mean, just thinking about it is like making me really sad actually. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the wood recommend because pain is necessary and maybe ice baths are too. Compression boots. These things are super expensive and I don't know, maybe you could get the same benefit from just getting half an hour extra sleep every night. I do enjoy using them, but they are super expensive and definitely not essential. We're putting them in meh. Hydration vests. Now context I think is important here because if you are going for a 20 minute run, you, you're fine. You just, you don't need to drink water during that time. Provided you're hydrated beforehand, you'll be okay, I promise. However, if you are running a marathon and you need some water on your person, you can't pick it up or you're doing a long trail run, I don't really know why you do that, but to each their own, I guess this piece of kit could be useful. So, um, I'll put it in the meh category, and I think I think I'm being really kind by doing that. Calf sleeves. Just no. Shorts with loads of pockets. Okay. 
Yes, amazing. Please can we have pockets too? Like the females out there that like running and taking their keys with them and their cards, and maybe a gel, maybe, I don't know, whatever you, else you keep in pockets. We never have pockets in our shorts. And I see these guys crossing my path on a run. It's as if they've got keys in six different pockets. I mean, like who even needs that many keys? But they have the opportunity to put them in that many pockets because they, ha they have been provided with those pockets by the apparel brands. So please, starting a campaign here and today and now, here, now and today, I'm starting a campaign, please, for pockets in women's shorts. Provided you can follow through with my polite request, they're going in the would recommend category. But if you don't deliver apparel brands, I will single-handedly shame multiple pocket shorts and drag their name through the mud. Oh, 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 shiver my timbers. We're moving on to the more sort of situational categories here. This is where it gets really fun. Just not throwing away shoes that are worn out. What is wrong with us? I do this too. I have at least six pairs of shoes that have no miles left in them. I only need one pair of those to not do gardening in, to take stuff to the tip or to go on a really muddy walk. We need to stop getting emotionally attached to these shoes. Recycle them, pass them on, give them to charity, just get them out of your house. They stink. In the bin. Going for a mid-run poo. This one could go in any one of these categories on a given day. But let's just think about it. Okay, sometimes the experience is not pleasant when you're looking for somewhere to go and if you live in a, in a quite an urban area, it can be difficult. But how many friendships have been made stronger by the conversations about the mid-run poos you've had? How many times have you passed a point on a route and been able to say to one of your running buddies, it's a great poo spot down there. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. How many times have you felt so much better from just letting go? And for all those reasons combined, and for the fact that I think it's, it's great that we constantly talk about this as runners, don't lie, you've literally got friendships that are built on the foundations of mid-run poo conversations. It's going in the PB material category. I think that mid-run poos are responsible for part of the reason why we love this sport, which is very concerning, but that's where it's going. Another great situational one here. You're in the car with a few of your friends and you drive past something that's basically nothing, but you just have to tell them that I've run down that path a few times, actually. Yeah, and actually I've got the, uh, fifth fastest segment at the top of that hill that back there. Yeah I've, yeah, I've run down there a few times. No one cares. We need to stop. We all need to stop. I'm, I'm gonna make a pact. Uh, it's giving me the ick. The permanent watch tan line on the wrist. I actually think it's a flex. I'm gonna put it in would recommend. This is one of my favorite things to do. When you're on a plane that's either taking off or landing, looking for a track. I don't know why, but it's just so satisfying if you haven't played it before. Even if you haven't got a window seat, I would say lean over a complete stranger to see a track in a plane. Um, it's going in PB material. I don't think it has any difference in how fast you run, but it's going up there because it's really fun. Well, well, well. We do run in certain weathers, and over here in the UK, we like to talk about it. So without further ado, running in the rain. I've got a lot of time for running in the rain, provided there's no other weather conditions involved. I think that's kind of impossible because it has to be a temperature. But as long as it's not cold and it's not windy, running in the rain's pretty fun. I'm gonna put it in, would recommend. Running in extreme heat. <sighs> it's just not enjoyable and it can be really dangerous. So for that reason, meh. The third weather condition we have is wind. Run. I hate running in the wind. It's awful. No. Wind should be banned, unless it's for eco-friendly fossil fuel alternatives. But just don't run near wind turbines. What? And then to summarize all of that, we have the weather app. All runners have an unhealthy obsession with the weather app. You will check it at least six times before going for your long run. It won't help you decide whether to wear a t-shirt or a long sleeve for your run, but you'll still check it anyway. And for that reason, it's staying in the would recommend category. Cross training. Mm. Can't wait to go for my elliptical today. Definitely wouldn't rather be running. No, <laughs> I don't love cross training. However, it is really good to reduce your risk of injuries. 
and to keep you fit if you're coming back from an injury. So, so boring though. Cross training, against my better judgment, is going in the would recommend because it's a sensible thing to do, but it's not fun. And lastly, there's a controversial one. A few of you watching this may even have one of these in your house. And nothing that I'm about to say is meant to offend you directly or indirectly. This is just my opinion. The metal wall is fine if you're under the age of 15. <laughs> if you're not, at least relegate it to your garage. <sighs> it just gives me the ick. I'm sorry, but I think it's fine to be proud of your achievements. It's just... <laughs> it really makes me cringe. I do know people that have these and it's fine. It's fine. I'm not gonna burn you for it. I'm not even gonna ask you to put them in the bin, but I've gotta be honest, it's ick energy. It's going in, giving me the ick. And there you have it. That is the ultimate running tier list. Now I know there's a few things that maybe I've forgotten on there. And if you think there are some really important things missing, let me know what they are in the comment section below. And if you've enjoyed this tier list style video, maybe I could be persuaded to do another one in the future. If you hit that like button and ham the subscribe button while you're at it, love the grind.